And you're back inside of Mission Control, Houston. Dan Hewitt here, and I'm joined now by Ray Bigginess, uh, one of our visiting vehicle officers with the flight team here. Uh, we're doing um, kind of, we're, we've been talking to a few people as we're getting ready for the first orbital launch of Cygnus, scheduled to launch uh, next week on uh, September 17th, docking with the International Space Station on September 22nd. Now, Ray, you're a visiting vehicle officer. Real quick, what is that? What is your role here in Mission Control? Yep, um, I am a vis visiting vehicle officer, VVO. Uh, we're a space station flight controller that's responsible for the dynamic flight of any visiting vehicle coming mm -hmm. up to the space station. So we look at um, Cygnus, which is coming up next week, uh, the, the SpaceX Dragon vehicle, JAXA's HTV, ESA's ATV, and the, all the Russian vehicles. So uh, we kind of have our hands full. There's a lot of traffic going yep. to and from the space Busy station time these right days. Now. Absolutely. Um, so we look at the dynamic flight of the vehicles. We make sure that the, the vehicle's on a safe trajectory at, as intended, and we make sure that um, they're following the timeline, that the crew is involved in the mm -hmm. right way, and uh, everything's proceeding safely. Now, this is going to be the very first Cygnus to ever get to travel to the International Space Station. Is there anything special you guys are doing for this flight, any preparation you're going through? Yeah, this, is, this has been a, a work in progress for the last three to four years for, okay. for me. Uh, some of us in mission operations have been working on Cygnus for five, six, seven years. And I know Orbital's been working on it for a long time, too. So it's a long uh, time coming. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is a huge milestone for us, this first flight. Uh, we've had to um, watch as Orbital designs the vehicle, mm -hmm. make sure that it meets all of our requirements for safety and for the, the, the prudent flight of the vehicle. Uh, we've had to... Uh, generate all the new ops products, all the timelines, uh, all the procedures that the crew uses. Uh, we've had to, uh, th the biggest thing for the first flight is that we've had to design the demonstrations that the vehicle does to prove once it gets in orbit that it's it's viable and it what can are, actually. What are some of those demonstrations? Well, So it's not just flying up and docking. No, it doesn't go straight. Well, it is kind of going straight to ISS, but along the way, mm -hmm. it's doing 10 demonstrations uh, all the way from just, you know, proving that it can perform attitude control mm -hmm. all the way to, uh, you know, making sure that its, it's close-in proximity sensors are, are working the way they should. So there's 10 demonstrations, and we've had to, uh, you know, develop the pass-fail criteria for those. We've had to work with very closely with Orbital to make sure that, you know, here's the standards that we expect. Uh, the vehicle to perform to, and please sh show us along the way. <laughs> so it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting uh, couple of days prior to the actual capture as they demonstrate the, the full capability of their vehicle. Is there any part of the flight that you're especially looking forward to that capture or anything? The the last 200 meters is is mm -hmm. really where where we train for um, the most dynamic part of the flight. We're pulling up. You know, Cygnus is pulling up right underneath ISS. Um, it's inside what we call the keep-out sphere. We don't allow any vehicles inside the keep-out sphere unless they have demonstrated that they can approach safely mm -hmm. and have the, the proper fault tolerance. So inside 200 meters is where the where my job really comes into play. Uh, we give them a go to approach if everything's looking good. And um, in particular, inside 200 meters, um, the, the crew is involved quite a bit, the ISS crew. Mm -hmm. They're looking out the window. They're looking at their camera views. They're looking at telemetry coming from Cygnus and making sure that the, the vehicle's in the right place. Okay. Now, Cygnus makes it there. It'll be the second U.S. commercial company to be resupplying the International Space Station. What are some of the differences between, you know, from your position, monitoring these vehicles compared to these commercial vehicles compared to, say, the international partner resupply ships like an HTV or an ATV or a, 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 a Progress? Yeah, that, that's a really good question. Um, first and foremost, it's different people mm -hmm. from different countries. Um, the two American commercial vehicles are, are, of course, in America, but, you know, they're com two completely different companies that have different uh, – ways of doing things, different personnel, uh, completely different procedures sometimes. Mm -hmm. So in dealing with m more than one at a time, sometimes it's hard to, to keep track of, you know, the little subtle nuances of this one versus the other ones. Um, and of course, when we start dealing with JAXA and ESA and the Russians, um, it, it, you know, there's of course the language differences are, are hard to overcome sometimes. Um, the vehicles are all completely different. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, we have to keep track of um, 
the design of, of one versus the design of the other. And then at the end of the day, we have to tell the crew how each vehicle is different because they may have just grappled to HTV4 yeah. last month and now they've got a Cygnus coming up. We don't want them thinking that they're the same because they're completely different vehicles. Okay. Well, yeah, like you're saying, a lot of, a lot of preparation work goes into not only for the astronauts, but the teams down here on the ground getting ready for these vehicles. Uh, Cygnus, uh, a fairly historical milestone, will be the second commercial provider to come online resupplying the International Space Station. Right here will be our visiting vehicle officer inside Mission Control Houston during that uh, very historic uh, moment for the station and uh, human spa uh, space flight in general. Uh, Ray, thanks so much for joining me here today, giving us a little insight into the inner workings of the team behind the uh, upcoming demonstration. I uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Go Cygnus. That's all right.